This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Yeah, they're going to be working some long hours. Back from school, I yelled out a greeting to the workshop from force of habit, but there was no answer for mom and dad. Instead, I was welcomed home by the drone of industrial machines, a constant companion from morning through night. Oh. On the dining table, a gorgeous meal was waiting for me, but the clouds of steam that proved the food was freshly made were missing. The pencils I used to wear down to the nub had all been replaced with nice new pencils, but I no longer heard Dad's encouraging voice at my side as I studied. Oh, this, this is getting real. I could wear all sorts of brand new clothes, but Mom didn't sew shark appliques onto my dresses anymore. Oh. <laughs> Among all these, what hurt the most was the simplest change of all. I no longer spent much time with my parents. Producing metal dyes is precision manufacturing, requiring both high technical knowledge and natural skill. It was extremely difficult to find qualified new employees for such a small business. Dealing with a workload that had suddenly doubled with the same number of people as before, there was no choice but to increase working hours proportionally. The amount of time Mom and Dad spent in the house became extremely limited, and the amount of time I spent alone grew dramatically. Oh, this is getting sad. Even so, I wanted their attention just as badly as before. Sometimes I would sit up waiting, rubbing my drowsy eyes until the machines finally fell quiet. あ、サチか。こんな時間まで起きていたの。えっとね。どうしてもお父さんとお母さんに見てもらいたいものがあったの。見てもらいたいもの。うん。ほら、見て。今日は初めて理科のテストで100点を取ったんだよ。おお、そ
familial love is more important than materialism. That's what I'm getting from this. This stuff isn't what I wanted. The only thing on my mind was conveying that simple truth to my parents. And so I sat, and I waited. Even when the clock ticked past nine, and our housekeeper headed home. Even when unfamiliar shows started to appear on the television, which I'd left on so I could hear the sound of human voices, I didn't budge. That is... Oof. That was a punch in the gut right there. She left the TV on just so she could hear human voices. Wow. And a little after the hour hand on the clock crept past 11, the clamor of the machines finally came to a stop. すごい。もしかして私たちの仕事が終わるのを待っていてくれたの。うん。そうか。それは悪いことしたな。おお、そうだ。遅くなってしまったけど、9歳の誕生日おめでとう。おめでとう、サチ。最近サチには寂しい思
It could only mean that my parents had started to hate me. Not, not the right logical conclusion, but it's understandable that a little kid would think that way. No matter how good my grades got, it wouldn't make them start loving me again. They were probably working really hard on their job so they could get enough money to run away together. Oof! The more I fought, the more dejected I felt. Why had I even bothered to try so hard all that time? Before I knew it, my legs had carried me to the neighborhood park where we'd once played together as a family. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness old Rusty is still here. But I might never be able to play there again. Not like I had before. I'm the saddest kid in the world, abandoned by my own parents. It was only a few moments after I'd convinced myself of this that I had noticed the mysterious boy. <laughs> Aww! It's little Yuji! He wasn't doing a thing, just sitting quietly on a swing, staring off into space. I'd always thought of the park as a place where everyone played all the time, so that motionless boy struck me as out of place. What's that kid doing over there? Only a few seconds after that first twinge of curiosity, I walked right up to him. Huh? <laughs> I know he's only like 10 years old, but he's already hit puberty, guys. <laughs> he has the deep voice. <laughs> if I couldn't hear you, I don't think I'd be able to answer. So, um, did you want something? Well, I wasn't doing anything, I guess. <laughs> it's little Sachi! <laughs> These are literally the same words she greeted him with at the academy. Were they? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. <laughs> Aww. That's so cute! <laughs> I mean, little Sachi basically looks exactly the same as grown-up Sachi, <laughs> but the two of them on the swings together, that, that's really cute. <laughs> oh yeah, she was saying, hey, can you hear me? That's right, I forgot about that. Well, my sister told me that sometimes people need to spend some time doing nothing at all. <laughs> are we gonna? Are we gonna? Is one day? Are we gonna meet his sister? Like she comes with him to the park. It's just like, what are you doing, hanging out with this plebeian? <laughs> yeah, that's what everyone says. <laughs> I'm picturing his sister is basically Azula from Avatar: Last Airbender. <laughs> Yeah, you're probably right. Huh? Also, Sachi is wearing Sayori's shirt. <laughs> the boy looked so painfully bored that even the saddest kid in the world had forgotten to feel sorry for herself. And he blinked up at me, completely dumbfounded. I grabbed him by the hand and pulled him along after me. That was how I met Yukun. That's good that she's finding friends. It's bad that he's going to move away. What's wrong? Yeah, I guess you did. <laughs> I'm Bill Buttlicker. <laughs> Yuji. Kazumi Yuji. That name is too hard to say. Huh? What's your name then? My name is May Comb Seepgood. Sachi? Like an orca? <laughs> Dane, Sachi with mo the sass. S sorry. <laughs> okay then, I guess I'll go with Sachan. I mean, nothing else really comes to mind.
After this brief exchange of introductions, we immediately got down to the business at hand. The jungle gym? Uh, wait, wait, hold on a second. After deciding on the event on a whim, I forcibly started the game. Yukun didn't have many suggestions himself, but when I pulled it on his arm, he'd follow. Pretty heavy-handed, I know. Anyway, we must have been fairly evenly matched in reflexes and strength. Every game was a competitive match. I was always the winner, of course, but only by a narrow margin. That made the games much more fun, so I just kept going and going. Before I knew it, the sun had begun to sink below the horizon. This is before Yuji went to the military and, like, got superhuman reflexes. Oh, I think I need to go home pretty soon. Yeah, we ended up playing a whole lot. That's okay. I'll be fine as long as I head straight home. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for playing with me today. Kind of weird for the person who got dragged around all day to say thanks to the person who was doing the dragging. It was all so odd that I fought about Yukun the whole way back home. I ended up so lost in thought that I barely touched the meal our housekeeper had made for me. Once he actually started playing, I think he enjoyed it just as much as I did. But when I was trying to think up new games, or when we stopped for a break, Yukun went right back to the expression I saw on his face at the start. Why was Yukun in that playground in the first place? It obviously wasn't to play. Maybe something bad happened at his home, too. Partly out of simple curiosity, I decided that I wanted to see Yukun again. The very next day, I made my way back to the playground. And he's back! And sure enough, he was sitting on the exact same swing with the exact same downcast look on his face. Hi. <laughs> well, yeah, and you said hello to me again, Sachin. Friends? No. Thanks for calling me your friend. <laughs> he got that little smile! That's a cutie. Um, did I say something weird? I have a feeling his home is not a great place. That's something else my sister told me. People who can offer their thanks to others have a happier road through life than people who can't, so... Well, that that's true! Huh? I guess I did, now that you mention it. Yeah. Sometimes I don't really understand what my big sister's thinking, and sometimes she's even kind of scary. But she's normally really nice to me. I think I love her more than anyone else in my family. Uh oh, maybe his parents suck. <laughs> I think his dad sucks, just from what I heard about him. Really? So I guess you love your mom, Sachan? Since you brought up her advice. No kidding. As the conversation moved along, we slowly learned more about each other. That was surprisingly fun in its own way. So is this all just the giant dream that Sachi's having from her PTSD? Is this Yuji reading the report, or is this just like, Hey, you need to know Sachi's backstory, here we go. I think this is turning- I think this is Sachi's dream. If so, wow, this is a long dream. I don't mind, but... Is it really any fun playing with someone like me? Thanks. It's nice of you to say that. <laughs> ah, you're right. Let's think it's both dream and reading. Okay. 
that's a that's a way of like okay interesting but that was fine by me for some reason every time yukun said thanks in that slightly bashful voice i felt genuinely happy uh i'm 10 huh seriously i was so sure it was the other way around I mean, you're stronger than me, and I'm a boy. <laughs> she Hulk! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, if you were, you would have turned green. <laughs> really? That's good. I've only been trying to tease the slightly timid Yukun a bit. But when he smiled with sincere relief to learn that I wasn't upset with him, I was surprised to feel my heart flutter briefly in my chest. My sister told me there was a quarter hidden somewhere in the park. I've been looking for it. No, it's okay. I just come here because I don't want to be at home. Not really anything bad, but I didn't want to be in the way. Yeah. You might not believe it, but my sister's what they call a genius. If she just studies a little, she can win first prize at anything. That's how smart she is. Yeah. Plot twist. Sachi gets jealous of his sister taking up his time and affections and being really good, so she's the one so Sachi's the one who kills her. <laughs> that would be weird. That would be very weird, but I could see it happening. But lately she hasn't been winning that many awards. At home she's been paying more attention to me than her paintings and stuff. Dad got really angry when he noticed that. He told me, hey, your use is trash, but Kazuki's actually worth something. Don't drag her down with you. In that voice. So I try to stay out of the house as much as I can to keep out of my sister's way. Your dad sounds like a dick. Sorry. Not really an interesting story, is it? Aww. Huh? It's true. Oh, Sachi's got the big heart. Sachan. Penguin Eve, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. I hadn't intended to cry, but I really was angry at Yukun's stupid dad. And the way he didn't belong in his own home reminded me so much of my own problems that they sort of just got jumbled together in my mind. I couldn't help shouting that it wasn't true, that he... that I wasn't unwanted. Sorry. Don't don't cry, Sachan. Yeah! Honestly, this is prob this is right here is my favorite part of Fruit of Grisea, probably. You know why? Because their kids were not getting sexual jokes. <laughs> it's okay. Thanks for getting mad for me. Because something bad happened at home, right? But that doesn't matter. You still got angry because of what my dad said. Yeah. So in return, I'll play anything you want today. For as long as you want. That's a dangerous thing to add to promise. Uh-huh. <laughs> Playground Iron Man? <laughs> what kind of extreme sports are you playing with your family, Sachi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
you know, pretty basic. <laughs> oh boy, we're swinging over the bar today. Th that sounds like little... Yeah, I'd be glad to. I firmly wiped the tears from my eyes, then seized Yukun's hand and set off running for the seesaw. From that moment, the day spent past, sped past in a blur. Covered in sand, the two of us explored every inch of the park, playing and playing until well past the time we had to leave. Uh-oh, this isn't going to be good, is it? And when I finally made my way home on that second night, I discovered a clear and pleasant change inside myself. For months, the droning sound of the machines from the workshop had bothered me so much that falling asleep was always a struggle. But that day, I was snoring peacefully away the moment my head hit the pillow. Exhaust exhaustion from running around all day definitely had something to do with it. But more than anything else, I think it was because I suddenly felt so happy. In the park, where I might never again play with my family, I'd stumbled across a nice boy my age. He was a sweet kid who said thank you at the drop of a hat, so things would definitely go well. We'd be best friends in no time. For some reason, I felt absolutely certain of that. As it turned out, my hunch was on the money. Cash money. After those first few meetings, Yukun and I started playing together in the park pretty much every day. At first, we headed home quietly when the sun began to set. But after a while, we naturally started to say, see you tomorrow. And when one of us couldn't make it for whatever reason, we'd let the other know in advance. Back to the certain place. Sachan, what are you doing over there? Just picking up the trash. Yeah, but why? Wow. You're so thoughtful, Sachan. I mean, lots of people might think the same thing, but that doesn't mean they'd clean up the mess themselves. And you did it without even thinking about it. You're kind of amazing. Did I say something weird again? You haven't? Such is life. Okay, in that case, I guess I'll have to take over that job for now. It doesn't seem hard to find stuff to praise about you. I think I can even handle this one. That okay with you? Okay, in that case, good job, Sachan. With those words, Yukun brought his hand to rest on top of my head. It was far smaller than Mom's hand, let alone Dad's, and yet, in that moment, his hand felt gentler and warmer than any other I'd known. It's interesting seeing how all this stuff is connecting. Yukun didn't just play with me, he gave me the attention I'd been craving. When I did well or tried hard, He'd compliment me right away. When I messed up or tried something risky, he'd give me a few gentle words of concern. Apparently, that also had something to do with his big sister's teachings. But whatever the case, Yukun's thoughtful warnings made me almost as happy as his praise. Lately, I'd started to wonder why I was trying so hard when no one even cared enough to look. But now Yukun was watching me, I now had a new reason to do my best. This is a long flashback. Yeah, be careful, okay? Yeah, you spun all the way around perfectly. That's really amazing. Not that I'm much good at the horizontal bar or anything, but I've never done a forward flip even once. Ooh. That's cool. Oh ho, really? Thanks, Sachan. Huh? Was that like a kiss smack or like a slap? <laughs> smack, probably a kiss. <laughs> yeah, th thanks. <laughs> that wouldn't make much sense if she slapped as a reward. <laughs> when I tried hard at something, Yukun would always praise me. Sometimes overflowing with happiness, I'd give him a kiss on the... Ch okay, yeah. <laughs> that makes more sense. And more than once, I drove myself so hard in pursuit of some new achievement that I ended up passing out on the playground. That's probably not good. That was how much Yukun's words meant to me. 
He had stepped into the gap left by my parents' absence, giving me the attention and affection they no longer would. I just want to note that, um, it's a good thing that Yuji in this context is actually, like, a good person, because otherwise this could have gone very, very differently. As I grew more and more conscious of what he meant to me, my daily life was quickly transformed. I spent less and less time inside the house. When I got home from school, I'd head straight off to the playground. More than anything else, I looked forward to that time I could spend playing with Yukun. So basically, they don't need the housekeeper anymore, because Sachi's looking after herself. At home, the constant grinding of the machines and the perpetual silence of our music box was still painful, but I found I could endure them now. Not to say that I didn't interact with my parents at all. <laughs> Funny that you should have- yeah, I, someone buried a quarter there and I've been looking for it. When coincidence brought us together, we were able to hold slightly awkward but reasonably friendly conversations. Even so, I had stopped actively trying to regain their attention. In contrast to the steadily shrinking place my parents held in my heart, Yukun's presence grew larger and larger by the day. I wish it'd hurry up and be tomorrow so I can play with Yukun again. It didn't take long for those feelings to blossom into a faint but unmistakable love. <laughs> 